Okay, so now you guys understand generally what to look for as far as product numbers go, although that will vary from person to person and from product to product. You can put in different search uh, criteria and find great products still, and there's no guarantee that if you find a product that matches that search criteria that it will work, but a lot of people have used those numbers or similar to those numbers and found great results. So it's a great starting point for beginners. So ideally what you would wanna do once you find a product, if you were using the product uh, web app, if you found a product such as, I'll give you an example, say we found Diamond Blue Fitted Spinner, and that was the product that seemed to be matching all our criteria. Of course, we got that as a result from the web app, so we know that it matches our criteria and something that we're interested in. What we would do is we pick out the keyword in there. So once you get used to finding products, you'll be able to pick out the keywords more easily. So right away off the bat, I said Diamond, Diamond Blue Fidget Spinner. I would probably think that Fidget Spinner is the main keyword there. So what I would do is I'd take that word Fidget Spinner and I'd put it in to the Amazon search port on Amazon.com uh, or whatever Amazon site I'm using. And I would type it in, click enter and have the results populate. So once I see all the listings, I'd hit the Jungle Scout Chrome extension and then I'd be able to see the, the results for all the similar products. So this is really where we get to see if the product is a good market to go into or not. So now we can see the numbers for all of the products there and now we can see if they match our criteria. Ideally, we still want eight of the, 12, eight of the first 12 listings that you see on the Chrome extension to match our criteria. So I'll pop up that summary right here. So you guys can screenshot this if you'd like. It's just uh, basically what I went over in my last video. So you guys can just refer back to it. So now that we found, say we found a product and fidget spinner, they don't match our criteria, we move on to the next one. If eight out of the tw first 12 listings there do match, we'd move on further into the deeper steps of product research. So once we found our product through the product research method that we've chosen and Jungle Scout numbers check out, it's still not considered a good product yet. The numbers could be good, but it might not be a good product for us to sell. We're still gonna need to check the seasonality. So we're gonna wanna make sure that this isn't just a uh, po one popular season product. So like if it was a Christmas decoration or something, that's not a long-term product. So if you did wanna go for a long-term product, it's not the product for you because after the month, is over, the month of Christmas is over, no one's gonna be buying that product again for the next year. So that's something you'd want to avoid. So we're gonna check seasonality and we'll learn that in another video. We're also gonna to wanna to check for patents and trademarks. So example of one product that you might find if you're looking in the toys category that keeps coming up that has good numbers would be um, fingerlings. So these are little monkey toys. Those are actually a trademarked product. So someone owns the brand fingerlings so you could not sell those if you wanted to under your own brand. If you wanted to retail arbitrage and you were buying them from a store and reselling them at a higher price, you could try doing that. But for what we're doing here, it's not going to work. We're starting our own brand and creating our own products so we can't use trademark products. Also patented products. So if there, if it was like a tool or something like that and there was a special way that they built it and the uh, usage for it, someone could actually patent that. So you could not be replicating that product. So we'd want to avoid that. So patents and trademarks are two big things that we really need to avoid or you could end up getting sued. You could lose all your inventory because you're gonna waste all your money on your inventory and not be able to sell it. So those are two things that we really need to look out for and I'll be going over those in a future video in this product research module as well. Lastly, we'd wanna check that the sales are actually real. So we'd wanna check how many, we'd wanna track our competitor sales and see how they're doing, making sure that they're actually making sales and there's not some glitch with the numbers on Jungle Scout. We'd also want to make sure that this is not all coming from external traffic. If the people have a big website and they're a known company, we'd want to stay away from those products as well. If it's like a, a huge company like Fisher Price for toys or baby stuff, we can't compete with a company like that. It's been around for ages and they're dominating that market. We want to stay away from those. So I'm going to go over all of these and how to avoid making those mistakes in the next video. I'm also, or in a couple of videos from now, I'm going to also going to cover which products and categories to stay away from. So stay tuned for that and thank you guys for watching.